Well, hello, and welcome to Zim Kids. Uh, this is what you'll see when you visit zimjs.org forward slash kids dot html. And the bit I want to focus on first, because it's uh, the important bit for you, are the lessons themselves. Now, the first set of lessons are called parts. And in each of these lessons, we focus on a single programming concept. So we start by looking at variables. Lesson two moves on to functions, then loops, then events, then conditionals, containers, arrays, and objects. And there are a set of later lessons called bugs and things. And in these lessons, we take a more holistic approach where we combine all the things you've learned in the parts above to make more sophisticated uh, applications and animations. So let's dive straight into a lesson to show you what you'll see and how to use it. So well, let's have a look at this one, functions. When you get into the functions level lesson, what you'll notice is that each lesson is made up of three levels. And what we're looking at here now is the sample. Now the sample shows you what you'll be making with each level. So in the first level, it looks like we're making some squares and circles and placing them randomly on the screen. In level two, ah, we have a function that we're calling every second and the function draws a uh, square by the looks of it and rotates it a small amount every time it's called to create this rather pretty pattern. And on level three, we're calling a function that runs an animation which expands this circle and then it pops. So what do you do with this? Well, let's take level two as an example. Well, first of all, you look at the sample and you see what it is that you're going to be making. Now code, when you click on code, that just shows you the bare bones of what it is you need to type to create that animation. It's the code, it's just the code, nothing else. Maybe a few little instructions here. But the thing you're interested in as a student is the info panel, because this is where all the information is that you need. And they're written as comments. In JavaScript, whenever you see two forward slashes, it means that a comment follows. Now the computer completely ignores comments, therefore you, the human. So all your instructions for the lesson are written in the comments. And the idea is you read down through the instructions, which explains the code that you're about to write. And eventually you'll come to a part which hasn't got the forward slashes at the start. Uh, these aren't comments. This is the bit the computer will ex execute. So this is the code you have to type in. And where do you type it? You type it in over here on the right hand side. And when you're ready, you press test and uh, it shows you your code in action. It gives you a chance to play around with it and change parameters. Just, just as a quick example, I might want to, I'm going to make a new circle. Uh, let's give it a radius of 100. I like blue as a color. I would like a black border of four pixels wide. And when I press test, no, nah, I don't see anything. I've created a circle, but I haven't added it, put it on the screen yet. I need to add it to the display list. And there are various commands to do that. But one is called center which, surprise, surprise, will add your circle to the center of the screen. Let's test that now. And there we go. Now, as you go through the examples, you will be creating more and more sophisticated things. And eventually, I'm sure you're going to be so proud of what you've done, you'll want to save it. And this is a lovely facility of ZimKids. It's this button here, which says save. And when you click on that, it will download your computer an HTML file containing all the code that you've just written for your application. And you can run that just by clicking on it and it will run locally on your own computer. Or if you're lucky enough to have a website, then you can upload the HTML file to there and anyone can visit your wonderful creation and see it running. This is just JavaScript running in the browser and all modern browsers can run it. Now you can get to the other parts by clicking up here, but I really recommend that you stick with each lesson and you go through each of the three levels, which gets slightly more involved each time. So on functions, do level one, level two, and level three. 
Now let's head back to Zim Kids, show you some other things that we've got. In Zim Kids, we use the metaphor of magic. And just like in Harry Potter, when someone says a spell, something magical happens, spells here show you what you need to type to make something magical happen on the screen. So you know, the spells are really the documentation for the, for the code. So let's click on spells. When you do that, you can see all the commands you can use in Zim. Now I use circle a little while ago. So say I want to find more about circle, I can come to the search at the top and type in circle and then click go. It takes me to the, the circle command, what I need to type to create a new circle object. And it also tells me the parameters I can pass in when I create a circle. So I can pass in the radius. The second parameter is the color, then the border color, then the border width. As you go along, the parameters get a little bit more obscure, but you can find out all about them down here and the parameters. You can see all the parameters and what type of information that parameter should be, whether it should be a number or a string or text or something else. And you can also see all the methods you can call on the circle object. And I've shown you one already. Center, that places it in the center of the screen. Okay, so that spells. Let's go back to Zim Kids. Ah, one of my favorite things is Slate. Uh, now, when you've learned a bit of code, you might not want to follow the lessons. You might want to do your own thing. And that's what the Slate is for. The Slate is a playground for you to try out your code. So let's click on it. And yes, you just start with a blank canvas. So once again, let's, let's, let's put an example together. I'm going to create a new variable called circle. I'm going to make that equal to a new circle. And well, let's have a radius of 100 again. This time, let's make it purple with a gray border of six pixels. And I'm going to put that in the center of the screen. Let's click test to see if it's working. It is, there it is. And I might want to control that uh, circle in some way. So perhaps, uh, perhaps I need a component. Let's put a slider. So I'm gonna make a new variable called slider. I'm gonna make that equal to a new, new slider. And let's see that. Now, once again, I forgot to put the, so put the slider onto the display. So I'm gonna use a slightly different command this time. I'm going to position it zero pixels in the X direction, 30 pixels down from a position that is center top of the screen. Now let's try it. That's better, got my slider. But it's not controlling anything yet. I need to wire it up to the slider, to my circle, connect it to my circle in some way. So I'll use the command slider.wire to wire it up. And when you uh, wire something, you can you can get the slider con to control pro properties of different objects. And I want it to control my circle, and I want it to control the property on my circle, which is the scale. Now let's see what happens when I run this. Ah, can't see anything. And then, oops, the circle grows massive as I move the slider. That, must be because the slider starts from zero and it looks like it goes up to, I don't know, 10 or above. So what I could do is when I made my slider, I could pass in some parameters or I could pass in a configuration object. I, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna say, I want the min value of my slider to be 0 0.5 and the maximum value to be, I don't know, let's try 1.5. Now let's test it. That's better. My slider starting at half its original scale, and now it goes up to a maximum of one and a half times its uh, its starting scale. Now the purpose of me showing you this isn't to teach you JavaScript. It's to show you how easy and yet powerful Zim is, and how with very few lines of code, you can uh, create some beautifully visual interactivity. And if you're interested in creating games or puzzles or creative artwork, you really should visit the uh, zimjs.org website where there's a wealth of resources and video tutorials that will show you how to do exactly that. 
and we're so impressed with uh, Zin here at eChalk that we use it to create our own applications, games and simulations for education. So I hope that's been a good introduction to Zim Kids and I really hope you enjoy learning to code with it. Until next time, bye bye.